my birthday. You own things that could be making you money right now. I'm Kurt the Cyber Guy. We're talking about the sharing economy and opportunities in renting stuff you already own. I'm going to list a bunch of stuff that I've recently found, taken a look at. You may have already heard of it, and many others you haven't. And the reality is I've got stuff after doing this story where I say, my gosh, this is right for me. There are other items that I say, you know what, that's a little personal. It's mine. I don't want to just lend it out to anybody or make money sharing it in the sharing economy. Peer-to-peer -peer platforms is what we're looking at. And these are, these are websites and apps that allow you to list your belongings and you play by the rules and cash starts pouring in. Uh, one of the ones we looked at that is really worth you looking at is a new startup based out of Los Angeles called Pavement, and that's P-A-V-E-M-I-N-T, Pavement, like mint, like a leaf. Uh, and they have a concept where you rent out your driveway or a spare spot in your garage or a carport. Anything that you have legal access to that you own that you could offer in a sort of Airbnb way like uber of, of your driveway uh can make you money in fact about 200 to 900 dollars per month could be the the revenue potential according to pavement and you will do a lot better when you embrace an app or a, a concept like this one if you live near a uh, populated venue such as a sports arena or where concerts are held or uh you you live in an urban setting where parking's difficult to come by, or if you, uh, like my mom, you live on the beach and you've got a couple extra spots, boy, on a nice day, people are willing to shell out the money to find a parking spot that's a lot easier, which may be at your home. Now, this isn't for everybody because, you know, it, it does come with an idea that you've you, you got to give up that part of your driveway for as long as you have it listed. But for others, it's a brilliant concept in the sharing economy where you can utilize extra space that's not too much of a hassle that you, you have control over and really drive up some revenue into your family, into your life by simply allowing others to enjoy what you already have. And you make money doing that. The on-demand peer-to-peer economy is taking off in a variety of fashions, not just your driveway, but, you know, I saw this and I thought on the rental side of it, you know, if I wanted to rent an RV, I would go to this spot. But if I owned an RV, I know I would be exactly like most people who are RV enthusiasts. They saved up they spent a boatload of money to buy this beautiful motorhome and they take care of it it's polished it is ready to go it is their next home but chances are like most people they got into it it was great for the first couple of years they went all over the country everywhere they wanted to go and they're just not using it as much any longer well rather than have that thing hog up your driveway or sit idle anywhere and uh you know that's not a good thing for an expensive motorhome outdoorsy is a platform that enables uh people who own an rv to list it there and make money and when we say money the earning potential of a class a motorhome is between 1200 and 2300 dollars per rental and then you ask yourself wait wait a minute I i've spent so much of my life and my energy and my money investing in this rv I don't want just anybody getting in that and wrecking it like people do to rental stuff. Well, you as the participant and the RV owner have the final say as to who you're willing to rent that out to. And that's a great pro to look at for Outdoorsy, along with the fact that they provide a million dollars of extra insurance coverage, as well as 24-7 roadside assistance for RVs, which is a whole other ball of wax uh, than a regular tow truck. So they, they've got you covered on that thing so you're not hassled while somebody's renting your RV. And the money that could come in off of that is pretty extraordinary. You'll have to talk to your tax person to find out if it's really worth a write-off. Like, for example, a lot of people would charter their boats um, on occasion so that they could turn that into a business and call it a, a charter boat business. It's not always legal. It depends how you set that up. It's something you want to consult with your tax person on. But the earning potential of 
uh, of an RV sitting around the driveway is pretty strong. And on the consumer side of that, I was thinking about, okay, what would it be like if I went to Orlando with a family? And I know I love to stay at Disney World on property, so you pay through the nose to be at one of the resorts there. And I remember being a kid going to Fort Wilderness. Have you ever done that? You went camping with your family? My uh, cousins, my aunt and uncle, they would put us all together, and we went, uh, and it wasn't a fancy RV, but we went to Fort Wilderness where you rent a spot, and it has water hookups and power and all the stuff you would need, but it's a great community, and you feel like you're out in the woods, but you're really at Disney. So you go enjoy the theme park while you're there, and then you're camping at the same time with all the luxuries that you would need because they have showers even if your RV did not. And and that, to rent a really sizable, gorgeous RV, I noticed when I picked, was about $325 per night that would house six of us on board and had the luxuries of a dishwasher, washer and dryer, a microwave, a full oven. I mean, it's crazy. And that really would save you money on that end of it. There are people also in the sharing economy that are that are listing their cars. You can share your car, turning your car into a profit center. Now, that's not for everybody, but for others, especially if you have a second car or you think that... Um, Maybe your car isn't being used as much because a lot of people, I, I have a number of friends, they use their car strictly to commute to work. And then otherwise, it just sort of sits there and uh, they don't use it that much. So it depends upon how much you're willing to list your car. And there's sort of two ways to go when it comes to making money with your car by renting it out. There's a site called Turo, T-U-R-O. And a separate one called Hire Car, and they use a Y instead of an I in Hire Car. Hire Car is about really letting your car go month to month to um, Uber drivers, other people in ride sharing economy. So you're essentially renting a vehicle that's going to be used uh, for that commercial venture. And that's certainly not for everybody, but for others, it might be. Toro, on the other hand, let you sort of just dabble with this. And it's renting to somebody who would just be renting the car for either uh, a day, a week, um, sometimes longer, up to a month. And each of the Toro rentals covers your your car with a million-dollar policy along with roadside assistance for that too. So um, you can essentially find out what your car would be worth if you go to the Toro website or if you just link off of CyberGuy. I'll have that for you there as well. Um, the car, A car valued, for example, at $32,000 is going to earn... $7,341 in a year if it's rented for 14 days out of each month. That according to Toro. So uh, again, it depends upon what kind of car you have, how much you're willing to put it on the market. And uh, boy, if I had an extra car sitting around and you told me that I could earn over seven grand a year without much liability or hassle on my end, that's going to pay for the wear and tear of that car. I don't, I don't, hey, I'm into that. Not for everybody though. Um, in your garage, uh, if you looked into my garage, you would say, oh my Lord, what happened here? I just really love my garage. I use it as a workbench. I use it as a storage place. Mainly you could never fit a car in my garage right now, even though it's a two car garage because, <laughs> because, um, first of all, I just have boxes upon boxes and they're very, or I know exactly where everything is. Nobody would think that you would think it's just a nightmare, but the reality is in my garage are all sorts of fun things that I've acquired over the years from surfboards, skis, a snowboard, and we have four bikes in the garage. Well, Spin Lister is a property that allows you to put all this kind of gear online and other people who are either on vacation in your neighborhood or in your city or just active people who are looking to rent by the hour, the day, or the week might be willing to pay for your bike, your surfboard, your skis, your snowboard, and the list uh, expands as they find out demand. Um, they do, however, have this limited $10,000 damage and theft policy that's available to the to the person like you who's going to list their bike to be rented or your other other activity gear. Uh, it does not cover overnight periods outside, so you got to be really careful to find out what you're getting into. I assume the company uh, has that limited coverage where it doesn't cover the theft of a bike overnight, 
um, because bikes get stolen during those hours. It's so, so frequently, but, uh, just have a real close look at the rules and, and what you're signing up for on any of these programs. Um, when you want to make money doing this stuff, uh, a lot of people point to looking to find out on each of these properties, what others who are really successful are doing. A lot of them say they take really clear photos of whatever it is that they're going to rent so that the person looking can clearly see what shape your item's in, whether it's a bike or whatever. And um, just look at those people and see how well they're doing their marketing. Not too much uh, on the verbose uh, descriptions, but just to the point, very direct, very descriptive, tend to be the ones that get easy um, listings and pick up from, from people who are interested in renting. Just think about if you were in their shoes, what would you want to be seeing? And a lot of people will not spend the kind of time you think they will reading through all of the detail of whatever it is you're listing. So just hit the bullet points on it. Uh, depending upon your location and demand, according to Spinlister, earning potential here is going to be about $500 a month. Again, depends on demand, depends upon the quality of your bike or your other gear. And, and that's just something to think about. Uh, you got a spare bike. I've got three spare bikes that I would let loose that are in the garage right now. Um, I just have to determine how much interface do I want to have with people when renting it? How often am I home to be able to coordinate that connection to the bike? Turn your garage into a storage business is another idea that was behind the launch of Spacer. And Spacer is an app and a property that allows you to either list simply extra space for a few boxes in your garage, or you could rent out your entire garage. And people who do that are earning up to $5,000. Um, well, it's $2,000 to $4,800 for the entire garage per year on average, according to Spacer. Um, they they have a lot of very good information as to being aware to set the amount of access to provide whoever is renting space in your garage or the entire garage once they've stored their items. Because do you want someone beating on your door at two in the morning to say, oh, I just need to get in that box of kitchen tools. No, thank you. I don't want anything to do with that. But what Spacer lets you do that's great is you can negotiate that in advance and you explain when you're offering it, uh, I will provide access to the garage on Saturdays between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. That's it. And for most people, that could work. You have to go and feel this out and see what other people are doing that are that are generating the most money. But all of this, when it comes to the sharing economy and peer-to-peer -peer sites like this, uh, uh, like this one, as well as the ones I'm talking about, um, a lot of these are new. They're in their infancy. There's a balance to be had. There's a sweet spot to be had in the convenience and hassle of your life and the amount of money you're earning. And you got you to gotta be focused and committed on uh, being in tune with that. You know the name of it. It's Airbnb. Renting a room in your house is not for everybody. I would not do this. But for a friend who lives in Hawaii, she converted her garage to a gorgeous luxury suite for vacationers. And guess what? I'd rather stay there than at the St. Regis. It's down the road. And her place is a fraction of the cost of staying at a luxury resort. But what's great is you occasionally can interface with her and you meet really cool people. She's told us about stories of, of amazing people from around the world that have come. Um, and, and she just loves it. And She's found that right balance where she doesn't have people walking into her own home, but they use a private entrance, and that works for them. HomeAway and Airbnb, the leaders in this area, I'm sure you've heard of both of them. They're, they're really the, the home vacation rental market kings, and um, renting out the entire house is also uh, a great way of covering the mortgage short term for some people. Um, you just, again, have to have to sort of search as if you're the customer in your own neighborhood and see what pricing is working out that way. No matter what you decide to jump into, you want to just really dig into what are the risks, what are the return possibilities? And that was uh, a smart thought behind the people of StyleLend. StyleLend is a site 
where you can list your designer clothing and you will essentially get get it clean and ready to go and people rent it and they rent it for about five to ten percent of what you paid for the item so let's say for example my mom has a chanel bag that's worth two hundred dollars well you can rent it out for about seven days at a time and she's gonna earn you know well that bag may have been probably five grand when she got it but she's gonna earn about you know two hundred ish in that neighborhood per rental if it's a dress or an outfit um you just want to really make sure there are no snags no tears no stains in the garment or it disqualifies from being part of this rental pool but you list your items then somebody goes shopping for them to rent them and you're ready to go with pre-shipped labels you send them out and the person sends it back to you um, not laundered and it's your responsibility to uh, have that clean and ready to go again the way the concept works with style lend is that they take 20 percent of the overall uh, rental and you keep 80 percent of that uh, and they pay you out through paypal or venmo they also like many of these can't work without insuring your items so there's a five dollar insurance fee on every rental that covers rips and stains and tears and uh, repairs if they're minor for you and otherwise they'll style them will replace an item that's destroyed or not returned uh, but not what you paid for it value it's going to be at the current market value uh, at that time so it's good to know what that is and be clear about it um, no matter what you decide to do you got to check with local laws in your community in my neighborhood airbnb is not allowed they don't allow it in my city i kind of like that because for a brief moment people thought it was a good idea next door to us i live uh in los angeles in a popular neighborhood that's near a lot of things and uh it's mostly single family homes around here but we're real close to some great party outlets and clubs and great restaurants so when people want to rent an airbnb in this neighborhood they are coming for a fun time which means we were woken up about three in the morning numerous times from the people next door renting it out constantly to these people that were coming for a night or three nights and they're up at all hours and jumping in the pool and screaming and our bedroom is right on that side of the house and that just did not work for us and luckily uh, our a city council person jumped into into play and said, yeah, that's not allowed here. And who is it? And so that got shut down. So you don't want to be like them being shut down by another neighbor and you don't want to create ill will with a neighbor. So check local laws in your community for that and have a balance with your neighbors about, you know, being cool about people coming and going so that you're not disruptive and it doesn't seem like you're the nightmare neighbor that is all kinds of crazy people stopping by all the time. Um, on all of these, you want to make sure that you have your own adequate insurance for damage and liability, and then also make sure that the participant does, whether no matter which platform you're on. And then you want to stay in control of your calendar. You want to decide when you rent out whatever it is that you own and that you can cancel that whenever it's not right for you. All this is really about for right now, playing with it and saying, Hey, would this work in our lives? And would it really make enough money to make it worthwhile? So you, you want to be able to play that game and be able to unplug it if it's not uh, not working for you or not cool. Um, also, understand the rules and the successes of each of these programs fully. So whether it's your RV or it's a style lens with your clothing, you want to know exactly uh, to the T the rules and you want to follow them uh, because they've set those rules forth so that it reduces liability and so that you do have the greatest success with it. And always look and see what people are doing on each of the properties' websites to generate the most, and reaching out for help to any of these programs. Look, they want to grow. They want it to work. So they're really very eager to share with you how you can make it work most effectively too, and that'll save you so much in the learning process. So reach out to them directly. And then have patience as these platforms grow. You may list your bike in your garage today, and maybe nobody bites on it for four weeks, but guess what? One day they might, and one day you might find the sweet spot in the pricing, and suddenly 
your bike is now paying for your next holiday vacation, right? So it's the peer-to-peer uh, economy, the sharing economy, as others call it. And um, there are some ways to make some money with stuff you already own. If uh, you'd like to reach out to me, you'll find me on social media. I'm CyberGuy at Twitter and then CyberGuy Official on Facebook. Kurt the CyberGuy on Instagram. And you can always just find all those links right at CyberGuy.com. Uh, and if you uh, didn't see me on TV talking about this stuff, well, now you heard it, and you heard it in the greatest detail. If you're feeling the love and you want to share this with friends and family, uh, please do. And if you're not feeling the love, send it to them anyway. Cue the Cyber Guy bump out. Thanks for listening. Cyber Guy.